Hey everybody, welcome back to V101 TV. I'm Tim Smith, at tsmith underscore co on Twitter. Be sure to click subscribe below to follow. On the last episode, we installed the vCenter server appliance into our home lab. This episode, we're going to go ahead and configure it and do some network configuration as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so I've logged into my vCenter server appliance using its name uh, and our uh, administrator at vSphere password. Uh, you'll notice there's getting started tabs here. If you go under the help menu, we can actually hide those. They show up under every object. First thing we want to do is set up our data center object here. If you right click on your vCenter, we can choose new data center and give it a name. In my case, home lab. Next is our cluster level. Now a cluster is going to hold multiple ESXi hosts that are going to share resources of some sort. So right click, enter your cluster. Here we have options for DRS, distributed resource scheduling, HA, high availability. Uh, this is what's going to allow VMs to start on other hosts if we lose a host. Uh, EVC, which is going to strip out CPU functionality uh, if we happen to have different CPUs in our hosts to keep them compatible. And of course our virtual SAN settings here, uh, which we're going to do in the next episode. Now that we have a cluster, we want to add in our hosts into here. Now I've got two already added. Let's go ahead and right click and choose to add a host and I'm going to use the host name ESXi2 and next. Here is where we enter the uh, root username and the password we set during install and we'll go ahead and click on next. If you have licensing already installed we can take it there and then lockdown mode. By default in my lab I keep this disabled. You might want to enable to strict in a production environment so that it can only be managed through some authorized uh, processes like through vCenter server. Down here you'll see the recent task list. This is where events uh, are going to happen. You can see the status of tasks that we've done. Uh, we're adding our host into the cluster and is now complete. Now noticed in the tree here it still shows disconnected um, even though it's actually not. Don't click this button. This is the history view. We want to go up here to click refresh for the entire screen and you'll see that our host is actually not disconnected. I'm going to go ahead and exit maintenance mode. I had this host in maintenance mode before I uh, removed it. So the next thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go to some of the settings of the host. Um, now there's a couple different ways. We've got the options up here or if you go back to home you can actually choose them here. Networking, VM and templates. We're under networking because we're going to set up a virtual distributed switch. This is a switch that is uh, distributed virtually across all of our hosts. Um, so we'll give it a name, uh, DV switch. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select the version. We're going to choose the latest. In this case, uh, this is still a 6.0 lab. 6.5 is out as well. And the number of uplinks. My servers each have four NICs in them, so I'm only going to do four uplinks per. And we're going to go ahead and not create a default port group. I want to walk through that process with you. So again, we're going to look down at recent tasks and see the progress of our DV switch being created. Now that it's complete, let's go ahead and select on it. And we're going to create some port groups, which are just grouping of ports that are going to share similar settings. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is create a port group for our, our virtual machines to be able to talk. Uh, in my home lab, I don't have uh, different VLANs that my VMs need to access themselves, so I'll just create one port group here. And I'm going to keep the default settings here. After we click Next, um, we'll go ahead and click Finish to complete the process. And we're going to create a couple more uh, port groups as well. So we'll go back in the right click here and New Distributed Port Group. And this one is going to be for our management interface. So there's a VMK, a VM kernel interface, which is where the management service is run. So we want to make sure that we have a port group for that as well. Now, if it's on the same VLAN that your virtual machines need, you could leave those on the same port group. Uh, I like to separate them out. Let's create one more here. This port group is going to be for vMotion. Now the difference in here is I want to put vMotion on a separate VLAN. Um, so I'm going to tag it here with a VLAN ID of 100. So anything that we put into this port group is going to be tagged with a VLAN 100. And last, since we're going to be setting up uh, virtual SAN in our lab environment, I want to create some uh, vSAN port groups as well. Now, in my case, I'm using 1 gig links, so I want to be able to take the most, uh, be able to use the most bandwidth that I can. 
Uh, so I'm actually going to create four um, vSAN port groups for my home lab. Uh, in a vSAN setting, we actually needed one VM kernel interface per uh, port group because I want them on separate VLANs, which is a requirement for multiple NICs in a vSAN environment. For vMotion, our multiple vMotion interfaces would actually have to be on the same VLAN. But with vSAN, it's the opposite. So I'm going to stick uh, my third port group here uh, on VLAN 202. You can saw my first one was on 201, 200. Uh, we'll go back here and we'll create our very last one, vSAN 4, and tag it with its VLAN as well. Okay, so we've got all of our networking done here as far as port groups. Um, so let's go ahead and attach our host to them, because right now we don't have any host attached to this virtual distributed switch. Uh, so we right click and choose to uh, add and manage hosts, add hosts, and we're going to go ahead and select all three of our hosts to add into this dis uh, distributed virtual switch. Once we do that, we'll click Next, and you can see we have a couple options. We can manage the physical adapters, which we need to do, uh, manage the VM kernel, but we also want to migrate virtual machine network uh, if you have any virtual machines already in place. At this point, you can see all the individual NICs in our hosts. So what we have to do is select each NIC and assign it to one of our uplinks. Now remember, we chose four uplinks in our uh, distributed switch. Um, so I'm going to go through and assign each one of my NICs to uplink uh, 0, uplink, I'm sorry, uplink 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and speed up this process. Um, but you can see there is also the option to auto-assign, auto which um, as long as you know uh, what NICs are going to go where, that's great. Or if all of your NICs just have um, all VLANs trunked to your switches, then that's uh, good as well. Once we have those all added in, let's go ahead and click on Next. Now our VM kernel interfaces, this is our management network. So what we need to do is uh, we chose to migrate that, and we're going to select the management port group. And I'm going to do this for each one of my hosts, um, because since we're moving all of our NICs over to our distributed virtual switch, that means that we don't have any NICs available left for our standard uh, vSwitch. Um, so I've got all three of my VMKs here on each host assigned. And you can see here it gives me a brief overview. There's going to be no impact to my environment. But I do have some VMs already here. So I'm going to select those VMs and migrate them over to my virtual machine port group I enabled. Again, because we won't have any network adapters left over on our old standard switch. So you can see here, uh, network adapter 1 for VCSA and for this Plex server are going to be migrated over. Let's click Finish, and we can monitor the status down below in our recent task list. Okay, so our networking settings are all updated, and we can see here that our hosts are added into our distributed virtual switch. Uh, we've got all of our uplinks listed there, um, but you'll notice here we still have this vSwitch 0, which has no more physical network adapters to it. Um, but uh, So we can uh, go back in and remove that. However, in my case, my uh, Plex server did not migrate over um, for some reason, so I'm going to migrate it over manually here by just editing the settings of that virtual machine and choosing that new port group for it. As soon as that finishes up here, um, I'll refresh it and you can see that we don't uh, have a VM there anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this virtual switch since it's of no use to me. And we're going to be left with only a distributed virtual switch for each one of our hosts. Now the last thing to do is actually add um, VM kernel interfaces. I made a port group for vMotion and for our vSAN interfaces, but there's nothing there for them yet. So what we're going to do is select an existing network here, and we're going to select our vMotion port group on our distributed switch. And I'm going to create in a new VM kernel interface for vMotion traffic only. So I've only selected the vMotion traffic there. We have a couple different options here. Virtual SAN traffic we'll select later. So let's go ahead and assign our IP address for our VM for our vMotion interface here on this ESXi host. Uh, now remember this is a separate VLAN. This port group was on VLAN 100. Um, so uh, in this case, um, we need to choose an IP scheme that's available on that uh, VLAN. I'm going to do the same thing here for ESXi 2 and 3. Uh, but you'll notice I 
again, have to go back and delete my uh, standard V switches that are out there because I don't want to leave those behind. Um, so while we're setting these interfaces up, uh, vMotion is able to take uh, advantage of more than one network adapter. So if you don't have 10 gig networking available to you, uh, you can actually utilize multiple 1 gigabit links in your environment. Um, in this case, they all need to be on the same VLAN um, with IPs on the same subnet, of course. And uh, preferably what you would do is assign one VMK to a particular NIC uh, and the other one to a different NIC. That way they're always dedicated to run on those NICs. Uh, another option in our distributed virtual switch would be to set the teaming and failover policy to load-based, which means that if one NIC gets overloaded uh, after a brief period of uh, observation, it will go ahead and move traffic for other things out a, uh, another NIC. Um, I prefer to uh, do a one-to-one -one relationship, that way I know what's going on. Um, so let's go ahead and delete this, and let's go back to our Plex server here and go ahead and test that we can do a vMotion. So we'll right click and migrate, and I'm going to change compute resources only here. And I'm going to select one of the other hosts that the virtual machine does not currently reside on. Does some compatibility to checks, make sure everything's all right. And we'll just go ahead and do next. Now we have a high priority, which is the default or a regular vMotion. Uh, regular vMotion will uh, have lower CPU cycles available to it. So if for some reason your uh, processors are stressed, but you still need to move a vMotion, uh, move a virtual machine to another host, uh, you can choose the standard there. Down here in tasks, you'll see the vMotion status, uh, 21%. Now it's going to jump around. It's not going to be a fluid 1% to 100%. Uh, there's certain um, points in time where it's doing certain tasks. So once it gets to 20%, it's going ahead and verify that yes, I can communicate to other hosts. Uh, we'll probably see a jump up to about 33% next. Uh, and then from there, it's normally a fluid uh, movement on up. And then uh, usually about 80%, it will jump on to 100% as it does. It's a little bit of cleanup tasks here. So let's go ahead and wait for our vMotion to take place. All right, and our vMotion is now done. Our particular VM here, Plex server, is now on our ESX3 uh, server instead of ESXi2. And that is how vMotion works. Uh, on the next video, what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, set up our VM kernels for vSAN and set up vSAN uh, on our cluster, which is going to be some shared storage. So go ahead and click on subscribe uh, so you can catch the next video, and I'll see you then.